Hello, this is Spiros. And this is part Gamma Beta of Reflexology History. We're looking at the text of Cornelius Celsus. And we're at the part where we read the following. Much more often, however, some other part is to be rubbed than that which is the seed of the pain. This is clearly what we reflexologists do. And he continues, and especially when we want to withdraw material from the head or trunk, and therefore rub the arms and legs. This passage clearly describes uh, the way we reflexologists think today. One major difference is there is no reflexology map. There is no mention of something like that, but we will get to that in a following uh, video. What is of utmost interest in this passage is the use of the word material. Well, and I want to explain what this means. For Hippocrates and the ancient Greeks, because material, or in Greek, peritomata, was used first by Hippocrates, then by many others uh, like Aristoteles, Plutarchos, Galen, uh, and some more we will see them uh, shortly. So the word peritomata means waste matter, residues, in general useless or harmful substances. Hippocrates would uh, rid the body of these harmful substances by means of uh, vomiting, defecation, or by means of the apnoi, this is Greek, and it means through breathing, transpiration, respiration, and he would do this by opening the constricted pores of the skin by using uh, either an instrument called the striggle or rubbing or massage if you like but massage is arabic in origin uh what is of interest uh, to see some other examples is uh, from the book stefanos the philosopher and physician commentary on gallant's therapeutics to glafcon in paragraph 25 he says we should allow them to remain in the warm water, the patients, because it can not only disperse the smoky residues produced by the fever, but also instill beneficial moisture in their place. Another example uh, of uh, what he means by the ancients meant by smoky residues was that they acknowledged that carbon dioxide was smoky residues. In paragraph 26, he says, in a secondary sense, however, we use oil in the case of people with constricted skin, since it can open up the pores and disperse the waste matter. So we can verify the importance of dispersing this material from many sources. And uh, I just want to make a... a show something else here that uh, the ancient Greeks would use the striggle. You can see an ancient Greek striggle on the upper right corner. The pictures on the left are Roman striggles and you see they're more refined, uh, very impressive. But these techniques have been used by many cultures around the world. So we have Gua Sha, which is Asian, Chinese in origin, Kajio, it's Vietnamese, Indonesian approaches Kerikan, Kerok, and they all mean uh, some a form of a uh, scraping uh, technique. And talking about uh, this uh, material, uh, it would cause obstruction in the body. Uh, if we have read uh, Ingham's book, we remember and we will see some similarities of uh, Ingham's thinking with Hippocrates. She states in in page 15 of the book, Stories the Feet Have Told, nature will do her part if we can help her by maintaining a normal, normal circulatory system. We are all aware of the fact that circulation is life, stagnation is death. This is on page 15. And of course, as far as nature, Hippocrates would say, Nuson Fisiatri, nature is the only doctor of disease. He continues by saying, Nature finds the means of treatment without thinking, like blinking or the movement of the tongue and other similar things. 
So the doctor, the job of the doctor would be to assist nature in doing her work. And this would be by relieving of structural, dispersing the material. Continuing on Kelsus uh, text, again we read about the disease matter. Please go and read the text yourselves. It has so much uh, useful information there. But I would like to finish off here by reading, whether our aim, he writes, is to relieve the limb actually rubbed or through it another limb. Again, we have mention here of cross reflexes and referral areas. This is also stated in Ingham's book, but also the well-known Hannah Marguard from Germany, famous reflexologist there. In her book, Reflexotherapy of the Feet, she describes Contrary to Ingham, who said that referral areas should be worked on the body itself, Marguard says that we can work these in a reflexive uh, manner. So for a right painful shoulder, we can work the left reflex area of the shoulder, the left shoulder. And of course, on the feet, we can also work the referral area for the painful shoulder, which be, would be the hip reflex area. And you can see this on the picture on the right. Continuing uh, looking for texts describing uh, methodologies of uh, rubbing to the feet, in the book of Philostratos, he was also called the Athenian, um, and his book is the Gymnasticos. It was written uh, after 220 AD. And he write, writes a lot about gymnastics and treating the athletes. And in paragraph, from paragraph 48 to 50, he describes the situation where the athlete has gone beyond uh, his diet and eating things that he shouldn't have, thus leading to the uh, accumulation of uh, disease materials in his body. And the gymnast should get rid of all these materials. And uh, in paragraph 50, we read, the gymnast must use for both the athletes of light and heavy sports rubbing with a medium amount of oil, mostly of the lower limbs, and dry them well after. So here is another example, clearly stating the use uh, of manipulation to the feet in order to affect uh, the body in its entity. Of course, these are all modern uh, compared to Hippocrates. Now it's very, it's important to see, uh, to examine the legacy of Hippocrates and to see uh, if he has written anything uh, regarding approaches uh, to the feet. And upon this quest, uh, of course, he writes in two passages about friction in general, but we will get to this on the next video. Getting to uh, the material and to the feet in general, let's remember for Hippocrates, it was very important to remove the noxious principle. We can read this in uh, the book of Aphorisms. Uh, it's a book uh, considered to be the best of, and it was written for experienced doctors. And in section two, we read, when one wishes to purge, he should put the body into a fluent state. This he would do with laxatives or emetics, or by bloodletting, or by massage. Uh, in paragraph 12, he makes an interesting statement. What remains in diseases after the crisis is apt to produce relapses. So this also means it's very important to remove all this harmful material. In the book about diet, he mentions in paragraph 66, whatever is to be expelled with perspiration or cleansed and gone with respiration causes no other pain but only to the part of the body that was evacuated contrary to the usual. Continuing now in section 7, we will see if for Hippocrates the feet and hands had any value for him, and he writes, in acute diseases, coldness of the extremities is bad, 
in aphorism section 7, upon severe pain of the parts about the bowels, coldness of the extremities, extremities coming on is bad. Continuing, we must ask ourselves, so what if the extremities were cold? Did he actually do anything or did he try to do anything about that? And in section 5 we read, such parts as have been congealed should be heated except where there either is a hemorrhage or one is expected. So we should try to heat its parts. On, in the book of Epidemics, he's talking about the city of Thebes. There was a major fever uh, that attacked the people of Thebes. And he describes that there was great coldness of the extremities in the feet, but more especially in their hands. And further down, he describes, and the extremities could not be warmed, but were livid and rather cold, and they had then no thirst. One should ask here, how would Hippocrates warm the extremities? It only seems logical to use rubbing to achieve uh, this state. Um, for sure, there is no reflexology map, uh, and many things are left to assumption, but Galen tells us that this is how Hippocrates wrote. Uh, do not re forget his oath that the knowledge was uh, not open to everyone, and uh, you would have to be a follower, a student of Hippocrates to actually know all these details. He wrote very, in a few words, uh, very concisely. Uh, but I do believe it's uh, very clear, especially compared to other references we have seen. Uh, I hope to see you on the next video where I will be explaining uh, my expansion of... Uh, reflexology affected by the thought of Hippocrates, and this will be called uh, orthopedic reflexology. See you there. Thank you.